So here's the drill. Uh, before we play tonight, we want to cover a couple things. You know, it's just one of the necessary parts of the process. As a matter of fact, sometimes you assume that they remember or the youth, the, the, the players come out of youth soccer, you assume they know more than they do. And so we have to remind ourselves every year, we've got to review the system. And the theme of, of the discussion for the most part here is defensive shape, how to move when the ball moves, and what your role is. And so every year, early on, first few days, we have video clipped, we have stuff on the board, and we walk them through. Here's how we defend out of our system. Here's how we attack out of our system. You need to remind yourself uh, of all the tendencies. Some of you didn't play a lot last season for injury reasons, and you need to remind yourself of what it's like and where you need to go. And on the attacking side, there's just some basic principles they have to adhere to, and once they do that, and they're usually just in terms of shape and spacing, then they're free to do whatever they want. You know, it's a wide open system yeah. going forward. Freshmen, the stuff on how we play our 4-4-2 will be brand new to you. And we encourage, you know, freelancing and being creative. There's just a few things they have to do before they can pull that trigger. And once they do, I think they have a blast in this system. Most of the stuff will be on your defensive shape, how to move, where to move, uh, if the box gets beaten, how do we respond? Defensively, though, it's, it's fairly complicated for, uh, for a team to learn quickly, so we have to spend a lot of time on that. The box shape is an extremely aggressive shape in many ways, and, and the places that it's vulnerable, there are easy ways to recover. We taught it to our pro team, and then we brought it here to Texas Tech, and we waited two years to bring it into this team. We needed to get more athletic. We needed to get more technical in the middle of the field. But it, it really has become kind of our identity. Teams have to spend quite a bit of time talking about how to play against it because it's not a standard 4-3-3. It's not a standard four across the middle wide. It's four in a box shape. It's not magic. It doesn't make us win. We don't think we're Brazil, even though they've used that system. You know, we don't make any of those silly claims. It just works for us. And when you get good at it, it does present some problems for the, for the other team. But if you'll notice, this diagram has you being in an aggressive position, actually even up in here if the pressure is really good, so you could actually steal the ball. Down the line, all right? The line is our friend. We want to play into the numbers that we've just created. We want to have a foundation of individual defending, group defending, and team defending. So it's something that we stress early on. Uh, it's something that is a culture that we've created. Here's the point that I want to make. With the, with the forward pressuring on the ball, the player directly behind them, the attacking midfielder, all right? They're stepping up into the space behind. You know, even our most uh, talented attacking players, you know, we find the defender inside of them because everyone can, can be a part of it. It's just not three specialists on the field or one person, you know, it, it's a collective group. And we try to make sure, and, and to be honest, if you can't defend on our team, it makes it hard for you to play. Because the result of us putting pressure on the ball Everyone does their job. Because we depend on, um, uh, you know, team concepts uh, and, you know, you're only as strong as your weakest link and, and we try to instill that uh, with, uh, with all of our players. You have one specific job right now. What is it? To have Aaron show us and um, teach us, it really helps because it's hard sometimes just hearing it without um, having any visuals and to actually get to all sit down as a team and him to explain it, it's, it's more helpful when we get to see it. That's exactly right, okay? Just because you're out of the play right now doesn't mean that you check out. When you, as a team, have the confidence in the player in front of you, behind you, beside you, you know, there are a lot of concepts we have that are totally dependent, dependent upon the trust of the person behind you or beside you. You don't maybe get to see them. Left back is into this player. This is the other center back. Look where the defensive mid is to the near side. They are stepping into this zone, which makes it very difficult. We're trying to play a way that allows our players to express themselves, but they have a real clear identity of who they are and what it is that we're trying to accomplish. You know, we don't try to overcomplicate it. We try to simplify it. In, in those terms so then they can express themselves as individuals within the, the concept of the team. So this is a super aggressive position. The only other thing that I would say, guys, is if you could tell me, and I'm going to ask Victoria, see if she knows the answer, which player in this diagram, let's say on this half of the field and over, which player can absolutely not get beat here? You know, when the other team kind of has you and your number's down or you're being counterattacked, that's not a time to go after the ball. That's a time to delay. That's a time to back up. That's a time to keep the game in front of you and just hope that enough ticks of the clock occur that your players can get back before their players get behind you. We are a team that presses in, makes it hard, in everyone's face, all up the field. But if they look like they might play it over our head, we want to back off of that concept. Even though we are a pressing, feisty, in-your-face team, sometimes the team has you in the gotcha. And when they have you in the gotcha, you got to back off. And you got to keep in front of you. you got to make them shoot from long range or take a bad cross, hope your keeper picks one off. Uh, that type of thing. So there is that balance uh, that we have to try to teach our players.
violently, viciously protect this space back here. Okay? Because this is where you give up goals. You don't give up goals up here. You give up goals right here. So watch the diagram again. Watch them race back. It's personalities of the coaching staffs, of the team, and the players that, that we like to uh, recruit. And we want to try to bring out the best uh, of those individuals. And, you know, there's not a, a player on our team from the most talented player to the least talented player that, that doesn't have some burning desire to get after it and compete. What we're trying to do is intercept passes. We want pressure on the ball and we want to intercept. When the whistle blows, say, let's go. And, you know, trying to bring that together in a, you know, from defending or attacking from a concept standpoint, I think it's important that everyone is on that same page. Look how wide open this player is. You got her. You got her. Why do you have her? Because this player's doing their job. It's who we are. Who we are, we're a team that when the whistle blows for 90 minutes, you know that every blade of grass is going to be touched. Uh, every ball is going to be contested. Um, and uh, at the end of the game, win or lose, the other opponent is going to know, man, I cannot believe that. It was the toughest team we've played all year. It's game on. And with the, the personalities that we have taking players on and a commitment to get forward, we can be very dangerous this way.